Testing one, two, testing one, two. Testing one, two. Power off. Testing one, two. Power off. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so it did work. Okay. Let me just do this right here. Okay, good. Welcome. Um, if you can hear me, just uh, let me know because I can't really hear myself here. Just before this went on, my microphone died, so I'm just going to go by 
your response. Okay, so can you hear me? Give it a couple more minutes. Okay, good. So you can hear me. It's, I think it's delayed, so that's why it's taking a bit. Okay, cool. Awesome. This works. So I'm just kind of waiting for a couple people that are supposed to uh, log on. I'll give them a couple more minutes. Okay, so I'm going to get started. Um, and I'll wait for my, my guests will probably come late, fashionably late. And uh, so I'm going to get started. Um, there's a lot of people signing up right now, but this is going to be recorded, so I don't want the beginning to be just like a big dead spot because I don't think I can edit it. <clears throat> so I want to thank you guys for coming. I'm going to have a lot of interaction with you. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask me. Um, so. Let me see here. Not hearing anything with computer speakers. Need to call in. Uh, yeah, you need some speakers on your computer or some type of headphone probably to hear me. Um, okay, good. So, <clears throat> yeah, this will be cool. So I want to talk about debugging very stubborn weight loss. So I'll be asking you questions and because um, I want to help you. But I want to give you a little background of some insights that I'm finding. I'm writing a new book, and uh, the, the title of the book is "It's Get Healthy to Lose Weight, Not Lose Weight to Get Healthy. And uh, it's a very unique book because it's very different than any other weight loss book out there. Um, when people come in to see me, they usually are, in their mind, they're trying to change their eating, they're trying to find out what to eat, they're trying to find out how to exercise, and they'll try this and try that, and uh, it's not working. So there's a couple reasons why I think that is. Number one, um, most people have just too much information. Um, on the web, it's, just con it's so conflicting. It's like a snowstorm of data just coming in, and you don't really know what is credible, what's workable, and you end up doing something that's maybe not important, doesn't work, so you end up not seeing results. And so... I usually see people at the tail end of that. So the first thing you need to know <clears throat> is that um, we need a foundation. We need some foundation. We need a, uh, a viewpoint to position everything because if you think about it in a snowstorm, um, this might be the, uh, yeah, I'm not going to take this call. I'm going to turn this off right here because... I'm talking to you, so sorry about that. So <clears throat> the principle, the foundation that we want to uh, build on is we want to build on a foundation of, and you probably already know this, it's get healthy to lose weight, not lose weight to get healthy. Um, and I want to define what that means because when you go to the doctor, he'll do tests and he'll say you're healthy, when in fact, if you were healthy, you wouldn't crave so many sweets or carbohydrates. If you were healthy, you would be able to sleep. If you were healthy, you wouldn't have a low stress tolerance you'd be able to digest. So um, there's seven factors that I want to revolve your our best health indicators. And I'm going to pull up a little screen share in here and just show you. Um, so this is my definition of health. When you have energy, you're sleeping like a baby, you can digest, you're not craving anything, you have no inflammation, you have no pain in your menstrual cycle and reproductive organs, are intact and they're working. So that's, when you have those, then you are healthy. Um, 
So that's the point of reference. It's we're going to base everything not on calories, but on how healthy you are. I've never met one person who had a stubborn weight problem who didn't have at least one of those seven items. So that's what we're going to be talking about, and we're going to help you to debug your own weight loss. But I want to really take it really, really simple. In the book, I get into high-level pr principles, and we go really, really deep into the details of um, <clears throat> like the seven reasons why you're not going to sleep. And then you can pick out the one that applies to you. So it's, it's, it's going to be pretty cool. It's taking a lot of work, though, um, because there's a lot of different variables. And I, want, I keep trying to make it simpler and simpler. Um, so I think the next thing I want to really bring up is this. I had a lady come in yesterday, and um, she's just really frustrated. She's getting older. She's getting bigger, and nothing's working. And when I assessed her, she had all of the symptoms of hormonal stuff, and she's so focused on her weight. But I told her her problem is not the weight at all. It's not the weight. And she's like, yes, it is. I said, actually, you have a weight symptom, and you've been solving the weight as a problem, and it's not getting anywhere. anywhere. It's kind of like the Dr. Oz effect where you're taking supplements to stimulate the metabolism or burn the fat directly. It's just going to be expensive urine. So you need to know and look at weight as a symptom and not as a problem or a cause of something. And of course right now they're trying to make obesity a disease because there's a lot of profit in that. But it's really not a disease. It's an effect of other things, those seven items. So what I want to do right now, if you can do me a big favor, is I want you to type in, let's look at, let me just open that back here. If I open up these seven items, I want you to type in, not all of them, but the one thing that you feel is the worst problem that you have relating to your energy level, your sleep cycle, your digestion, your cravings, your inflammation. That includes autoimmune, any pain in your body. <clears throat> inflammation could also include inflammation in the colon, in the sinus, in the lung. Um, it could be any type of fibromyalgia. And then we have pain. And then reproduction. If you're a male body, let's, how about your, your uh, performance? Or a female, what about your libido? What about your menstrual cycle? Is, is that a problem? And if we want to include under energy, also I want to include memory and stress tolerance. So go ahead and just type out um, any of those items that you have um, and just type in the chat box. I'm just going to look at that. As you're typing, I'm going to try to open up this chat. I pressed the button and I closed it. Let me just open this thing back up here. Oh, there we go. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm just going to read down the list as people, uh, wow, this is good, good feedback. Energy, sleep, cravings, sleep, sleep, energy. <laughs> Cravings, digestion, inflammation, lack of sleep, energy, energy, inflammation, reproduction, sleep, inflammation, reproduction, joint pain, stress tolerance. Okay, yeah, sleep, energy. I think there's a huge problem with energy and cravings. Wow. Okay, cravings, sleep. This is good. All of them. <laughs> Some in the last six years. Energy, inflammation, stress tolerance. Wow. Memory. Sleep. Cravings. Wow. Okay, so I, that's good data. All right, so now that we I isolated maybe the key area we need to look, we're not done with that yet. We want to evaluate what's causing your sleep problems or your energy. But I have a shortcut. 
and I'm going to show you what that shortcut is. Um, so there's another very, very important thing I do when I evaluate people, and it's a simple, simple, simple question that no one asks, which they should ask, and it's the most important thing, and it's basically this. When did you first notice you started developing a weight problem, specifically a stubborn weight problem? Okay, There will always be something, a stress event, pregnancy, change in diet. So now what I want you to type in is type in what age you were when you noticed that your weight started to pick back up. And if you, if you're not, if you don't have a weight problem, that's fine. Then what I want you to do is that one that you type, like the fatigue and energy, tell me when that started. If you have digestive problems, when did you start having digestive problems? When did you have start having sleeping problems? So someone said, tilt your camera down. Okay, good. How was that? Thank you. I just went back up. I was going to All right. So, yeah. If you have a if you have memory problems, when did it start going down? Right, type down the age. Okay, 35, 47 years old, 45, 38, 42. Okay, good. Pregnancy. 40, 50, 18 after birth control pills. Child. <clears throat> Hysterectomy. Gallbladder removal. This is so typical. Lupus. Marriage. Divorce, stress event, interesting, due to blood pressure medications, wow, 30, 45, 40s, 8 years old, okay, wow. Okay, so now we have, we have two things, we have your primary weak link underneath the weight, which could be usually fatigue, sleep, and, um, and things like that. And then number two, we have when your weight loss or weight gain started. <clears throat> um, you can do this with anything. You can do this with a symptom, um, but it gives us a lot of good data because it then tells us the location of what we need to work on. And I'm going to explain location in a second. So we have two problems right here. We have what to eat to lose weight, how to exercise, and then over here we have your body's reaction to the things that you do. I want to put more attention on the body's reaction because when you're probably 18 years old, you can eat what you want and you just lose weight pretty easily. But as you age, things become more difficult because the body is no longer responding to those triggers. There are six fat-burning hormones and there are um, three fat-making hormones. And the fat-making hormones are the dominating hormones. In the presence of a little bit of those hormones, all of these fat-burning hormones get squashed, nullified, they don't work. And that means that all it takes is a little bit of sugar, a little bit of stress, and a little bit of estrogen to really just kind of stop all your work, uh, all your progress. So. What we want to do is we want to figure out a way to speed that up and remove the barriers. And if we take and look at a lot of people, um, the weight starts after a stress event. Okay, so let's just talk about stress for a second because stress will is the number one thing that affects your sleep, your memory, your cognitive function, your energy, uh, the function of your glands, and especially belly fat. Okay, so yes, we have sugar in food and junk food, but stress is probably a really big one, especially as you age and you get into menopause. Um, <clears throat> I had a lady come in. I did a video on her today, and I'm going to post it uh, in a few days. But she came from Ohio, and she stayed for three days, and she um, she was doing fine when she, until she hit age, age 34, and she was married to a, a psychotic person for a long time. But because she lived close to a support structure with her family, she was able to cope. But then they moved away. And then in a matter of a year, they had about 19 people die around them and four suicides. It was just crazy. So as soon as that um, she got her husband out of the picture, um, 
she was just withered, completely burnt out, couldn't sleep, cannot relax, and just gained all this weight. So she's in the healthcare field and she's done everything, but nothing's worked. So she came in and I, um, it was a lot of emotional stress. So emotional stress is probably a thousand times more damaging than physical stress because it really shuts down the adrenal gland. So uh, we did acupressure on her um, her adrenal glands for a, every every hour and a half for three days in a row. And uh, I did a video, and you could you'll see how she feels now. She's basically feels like she's <clears throat> completely renewed. She can sleep. She has tons of energy. She has a, a sense of relaxation that she's never experienced in her life. Um, she's going to start losing weight now because we're pulling the stress out. So what I like to do is I like to isolate what was the trigger, and the trigger being was it pregnancy, was it a surgery, was it a gallbladder surgery, was it a, a menopausal thing. And then what we want to do is we want to take the location of where that trauma is now affecting your body. If you had a lot of menstrual periods every month for your whole life that was very, very crampy and bleeding, and, and then you had DNCs, and you had pregnancies, and tubal ligations, and then a fibroid, and hysterectomy, you have a lot of trauma in that area of the body, in your private parts. And that, that area, that trauma, um, can affect severely the adrenal, because the adrenal is the backup. So you would want to remove that trauma from the body, because it impinges and it gets stuck in the body. So there's a couple ways that we do it. We do it with acupressure, we do it with food, we do it with nutrition, we do it with exercise. Um, if the person had a gallbladder removal uh, that in, and they started gaining weight, how do you remove that injury? We do acupressure on that. I'll touch on that in a little bit, but I want to kind of give you an overview of that we have. We have the underlying seven factors and then we have the triggers that are found out by date coincidence, when did it start, what happened just before, and then we have the location of the body that you're holding most stress. Um, so those are some of the things that that we work on. Had another lady, she was, um, she started gaining weight when she was nine years old. That was her first period. It was a bit early. And she started noticing she started getting pretty large breasts at nine. When she hit 13, she got a double D. She had a breast um, surgery at 13 and the estrogen started going more and more and more and more <clears throat> and she had a lot of weight in the lower part of her body and breast and upper body <clears throat> so estrogen makes the fat on the hips and eventually in the arms back here and that's what she she looks like exactly um, another patient came in she came in Monday here's another ex example and this is a case that a person has gained weight her whole life and she's when she was four years old she was somewhat okay her and her sister are about the same size, and she's Asian, so she, normally her family is very petite and small, and she um, <clears throat> she's kind of the big one in the family. But what's interesting about her, she had earlier infections of the throat, the lung, the sinus, really, really bad, but her sister didn't have it. So what happened is that she started gaining more weight, more weight in the stomach, and then now she's probably in her 30s right now and she has a pretty big stomach so she's been trying to lose weight nothing's working and the earlier trigger was the earlier infections back when she was <clears throat> four years old that is still affecting the body you have to look way way back <clears throat> the thing that really gets her is her sister is not only America she's actually Mrs. Universe she does bodybuilding and it just eats her up because to have your own sister so beautiful and she's the big one and she's trying just as hard and she's eating even better than her sister is very crushing to her morale. So what we're going to do with that case is we are going to basically work with um, the earlier infections and work on the location of where she had all the respiratory and sinus because she's not sleeping. It's just equivalent to a lot of applications in the desktop that we need to close down to speed things up. <clears throat> so what I want to do right now, because I kind of gave you some principles, I want to um, answer some questions specifically on your cases. I know there's been a lot of questions. The thing that's coming in really, really fast because there's a lot of people on the webinar, so I have to kind of pick and choose. So 
I want to find out um, if you have some quick questions relating to your body and situations you're running into. So I can give you some advice on what to do. Um, and maybe you want to talk about um, questions on <clears throat> like your energy problem or your um, your fatigue, I mean, I'm sorry, your sleep problems or your digestive problems, and I'll help give you some advice. So, sorry for the loss of your son, Jan, must have been awful. Oh, I didn't, I didn't lose any family members. My son's still alive, I don't know. I don't know what someone's saying there. Um, okay. I, must, I don't know what's happening there. Okay, so Jan says, I've, I've gained weight four decades ago. <clears throat> I'm 70. Energy is an issue. My lab tests are currently good. No indicated shades of inflammation or hypothyroid or thought diabetes. I cope with the family losses and live alone. The trigger was the death of my son. Oh, that's what you're talking about. I remained off medications. Okay, <clears throat> now here, here's, here's the thing, that those losses... Um, the, the stress gets stuck in your body as well. And I'm going to talk about the body stress. It's usually in the adrenal glands itself. And you need to probably learn how to do some acupressure on your adrenals. There's a device that I have. I'll show you. It's, it looks like this. It's an acupressure device. I have them in all my rooms. You can do it your neck, you know, as you're sitting in a tall back chair, <clears throat> or you can do it on your adrenal glands. And I teach people how to do it at home if you're not in the area. So you can do that, and it'll actually help to kind of deflate some of the, the stress that's in the gland. The glands are little muscles that secrete hormones. And so if the hormone is too high, high cortisol, the gland needs to be worked on to get it to pump again. You can do it on diabetics. You can do it on adrenal. You can do it on thyroid. You can do it on ovary to help regulate the hormone output <clears throat> versus working on the actual hormone itself, which rarely, rarely works. You have to work on the gland. Okay, so that's something that I would recommend to do, Jan, because that would give you a lot of relief um, for sleeping and just high tolerance, so you can you can move on. It's a physical body, you know, correction. The other thing that I want to mention on a side note: if you're stressed out and you're not sleeping, or if your adrenal cases um, and you have belly fat, um, hands down, the absolute best exercise that you can possibly do would be walking. Um, not even as much yoga, but walking. Long walks, getting space, looking at a tree, a bird, and a cloud. Because what happens, we need to extract you from that computer as you're on the computer all day or watch, you know, like you're going to work and you're on a computer, you're thinking, thinking, thinking. Because <clears throat> I don't know if I can pull this up. I'm going to try something. I'm going to draw a little picture here. I have no idea if this is going to work. Let me try this here. Let me just try something here. This may work. Okay. All right. So here's what happens. A little diagram. This person is totally thinking all day long. Can't 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 turn it off. Excessive analyzing. Okay. So they need to go and not in a gym, on a treadmill. They need to go out there and basically get space, get their attention going out, looking at birds, clouds, and trees, but without analyzing in them. It gives them a lot of space. And then the adrenals, which, see, when you're thinking, you're turning on all these pictures that are memories, and they have stress in them, and that keeps the adrenals just really just kind of wired. So... That's just one point that I think is very, very important. Okay, so now I have another person that says hypothyroid, but I feel my body is fatigued and I have adrenal issues. I have a lot of stress in my life now, 48, um, coming through menopause, struggling with biggie tummy, can't fall asleep at night, and I have low energy during the day. Okay, so this is, this is a perfect person to analyze. <clears throat> they have hypothyroidism. Um, that's going to cause fatigue, absolutely. But let me show you something because there's there is three types of so we're gonna pull the string. She's fatigued, so we have energy problems. Okay. And now we know that the thyroid, hypothyroid, will do it. So the thyroid, I'm gonna draw a picture of the thyroid. 
Okay, the thyroid is down. That's a really good picture. Now, <clears throat> the thyroid is always secondary to something else unless there is a primary injury or radiation therapy. Typically what happens is the thyroid will not be able to convert its hormones, T4, to the liver, okay? Because there's a digestive problem. It's usually low bile, B-I-L-E. In that case, if you took some bile salts, <clears throat> you'll notice your thyroid kick in. And how do you know you have low bile? You're bloated, you're constipated, you're, um, you, have, um, you can't get satisfied when you eat, you get right shoulder pain. Those are all symptoms of low bile. Okay, the other symptom could be high estrogen from the ovaries. So you have this high estrogen that can come and block the thyroid. So do you have a history of heavy periods? <clears throat> do you have a history of a lot of menstrual issues? So that's one, that's two, and then the third one would be autoimmune. That's adrenal. Yeah. So let's talk about autoimmune just for a second. I'm just using her as an example. This uh, book right here, it might be backwards, I don't know. It's called SIBA. It's uh, volume four, and <clears throat> this is interesting. If we look at the adrenal hormones called cortisol, it says right here that if cortisol is too high, your antibodies will start to be released, and you become very susceptible to all sorts of autoimmune conditions. And that's why most autoimmune cases uh, are treated with steroids. What's a steroid? An adrenal hormone. So all autoimmune problems are adrenal triggered. So again, <clears throat> we don't want to necessarily treat the disease. We want to get the adrenal glands up and get it working better. So, oh, okay, so some people can't see the drawing. Okay, well, darn it. Um, let me just try it now. Yeah, you're not probably not going to be able to see it because the uh, my writing is very small. So, sorry about that. I'll have to. Well, you know what? Here's what here's what I did. I <clears throat> I created uh, about seven thyroid videos. I'll be releasing them on YouTube every day for the next seven days. So you can go on there and watch as much as you want on the thyroid. I cover all this data, um, but. If you don't know the YouTube channel, just go to my blog, drberg.com, and then click the blog. And then they're all YouTube videos. You just click right into the YouTube, and then you can see my, um, my page. It's Dr. Eric Berg 123. Okay, that's the channel name. All right. It says, my husband is a thyroid with a health condition and meds. Years trying to lose weight and nothing. Well, if it's not autoimmune, it's either a gallbladder problem or it's an estrogen problem. Chances are it's not going to be estrogen for him. <clears throat> so he needs, if you just had him take some bile salts, you can either get gallbladder formula or just go to the store and get bile salts, purified bile salts. You're going to find that <clears throat> T4 will start converting to T3 a lot better. When you go from T4 to T3, it's a, what happens is T4 is the number of iodine molecules, and that's an inactive form. And then once taken off, it becomes T3, and then it becomes the active form. Bile helps that conversion. Without bile, you um, will have a big problem with converting the thyroid hormones. In fact, um, if you take a little bile, you just might find that you don't need as much medication on your thyroid. It's one of the most the simplest thing that you can do. Um, where do you get bile salts? You can get them from the health food store. I have them. Um, in a product called gallbladder formula on my website. You can do that if you want. Um, okay, so okay, so if you're on Synthroid, <clears throat> yeah, okay, this is good. If you're taking Synthroid, you're taking thyroid medication and you're not having you're not losing weight and you're still tired, we know for a fact that you are secondary. It's not primary. So, um, in other words, it's not going to work because you're not feeling any better. You're just treating a secondary problem. It's just not going to work. How does, the, how does it help conversions? Well, there's two, 
there's two main thyroid, there's actually three or four different thyroid hormones, but um, you have the inactive version, and then you have the active version. <clears throat> Synthroid is inactive, it's a T4. And so the question is, how do we turn it into T3 to make it work? Well, that's done through your liver. And that's and you need bile, B-I-L-E, to be able to strip off the iodine uh, to make it work. Okay? So yes, it traces back to digestion. So here we have the situation. You're trying to lose weight. You got a, you're tired. You got a thyroid problem. But even deeper, we got a digestive problem. This is all going to be in the book that I'm writing now because you have to pull a string, and that's why um, <clears throat> you have to ask questions, and you can't just start treating things higher on the list because they're not going to work. But you have to know the right questions to ask, and the doctors just do not ask these questions deep enough. They pretty much treat the tip of the iceberg, so you have to go deeper. Okay, good. Dr. Berg had a hysterectomy 10 months ago. Uh, kept one over. I'm taking kelp, chase tree for the past two months. I don't know what to do anymore. Okay, so she had a hysterectomy. All right, this is good because the hysterectomy, all that did is it removed uh, a lot of your parts and it forced your body to uh, force your adrenals to work twice as hard. The adrenal gland is the backup to the ovary and the uterus. When you have those organs dismantled and taken out, the adrenal gland has to work harder and harder and harder and harder and harder. So what you need to do is support the adrenal gland. You can do it with um, the do-it-yourself acupressure, or you can also do it with a product I have. It's called Adrenal Support. It's a recovery nutrient. But whatever you do, um, your goal is to improve the adrenal with the backup to the ovary because those organ parts are gone. So you, I think you have one ovary. That's going to probably help you lose weight way more than treating the ovary itself. So because you have the backup organ. Okay. So yeah, I know. Here's another person who no change with taking thyroid medication. Well, you know, it's just not the right thing. If you get the right problem and the right solution, you will feel better, and it shouldn't take 20 years. And I have people that are on Synthroid for 20 years, and the doctor says, "Well, just keep taking it." Um, okay. Okay, so I have um, <clears throat> have my little notes right here. It's my notes from my book. If you can read that, it's backwards. This is a very rough draft, by the way. It's just so I can wrap my head around uh, what I'm doing. But <clears throat> yeah, there's um, I'm going to be doing some more webinars, so I just want to touch on this. But like for sleep, for example, here's some common reasons why people can't sleep. The adrenals burnt out. Okay, that's a given. They have sleep apnea. That's a different problem. It's the sinuses. Um, they can't breathe. They can't breathe through the sinuses because they have sleep apnea and the mucous membranes are swollen on the nose. So the air doesn't get in. So they basically can't, they're, they're actually can't sleep because they can't breathe. Hot flashes is another common cause to sleep. But you know what? Uh, even a bigger, more common cause of sleep problems? is digestion problems. It's bloating. It's basically um, trying to go to sleep with your stomach all bloated because you ate the wrong foods or, or other reasons. Um, if you eat the wrong foods or you're eating too much fiber and healthy food, even like cruciferous vegetables, even, even some people do the kale shake, they get bloated. And then what happens is they're not going to be able to sleep. Why? Because the brain, there's a second brain in your gut. And a lot of the nerves go up from the gut up into the head, and only 10% goes down and 90% goes up. So whatever is going on in your gut is going on in your head. So if you have brain fog, you can't rest at night, it, chances are it could be your digestive system. And then we have high blood pressure or high pulse rate. That can keep you up. And then your bladder. I just did a vid video on bladder problems. I will I'll release that this week as well. So there's... Um, Urinary bladder problems, that's going to keep you up. And then we have muscle cramps. So we got adrenal, sleep apnea, hot flashes, bladder, high blood pressure, cramps, and digestion. So that's pretty much um, kind of what we're going to go is we're going to go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, okay, so let's see here. What do you think of a high-fat, low-carb diet? 
to lose weight. <clears throat> okay, Jennifer, I think that's a, a great, great idea because you're going to stimulate fat burning, and yes, the fat is going to force you to lose weight, and so is the low carb. The only thing you got to make sure uh, with that, Jennifer, is you have to make sure that your liver and your gallbladder can digest that fat. <clears throat> so if you start to feel bloated or stuffed or even um, um, right shoulder pain, then we know that your gallbladder needs some support. So just take into consideration that you might want to add more bile salts as you increase more of that fat. Other than that, I think it's, it's something good to lose weight. I think it will help you. Does the gallbladder formula... Uh, have the bile salts? Yes, it does. Does gallbladder formula or the bile salts uh, help with sto dissolving stones? Yes, it does. <clears throat> In my gallbladder formula, I have um, something called stone root and a lot of other nutrients to help break down stones. Um, why do adrenal types <clears throat> lose their buttocks? Mine's almost flat. I don't think it's just age. Well, <laughs> good question. Let's open SIBA, and I'll show you what happens. So you can see this body right here. Uh, it says right here, <clears throat> the overall catabolic, that's a breakdown effect of the adrenals, brings about marked muscle wasting of the quadricep and the gluteus maximus. So what happens, that's your butt muscle and your leg muscles. The way to know that you have a problem with that is that you can't, do deep squats and climb properly uh, because your legs and your butt are becoming atrophy. Your body is taking, <clears throat> stealing protein and converting it into sugar in the gut as a survival me uh, mechanism. Okay, Dr. Berg um, has a video on cramps. Check it on YouTube. Calcium, yeah. <clears throat> there's, there's really three causes of cramps. One, is too much calcium with too low magnesium. So we got low magnesium, high calcium. Okay, that's one. The way to fix that is take some magnesium. Number two is low potassium. That's the that's a no-brainer. Just uh, consume the amount of vegetables that you need, and then you'll actually be fine. And number three, it's the side effect from medications. That's a very common one as well. So those are the three causes of cramps. Um, there's other ones that are not as common. Okay, Linda asked what about probiotics. Okay, yeah, now that that's a whole different video, but probiotics is probably the number one thing people really need um, because of the fact that you have a hundred trillion microbes living around and in your body right now, and you only have a hundred, let's say no, it's a hundred, no, it's a thousand trillion microbes living in, a, in your cells, which are only a hundred trillion. So you're basically only one-tenth of what's on your body, and you have a lot of other things in there. And these microbes really, really help you. They can hurt you, but they can help you. They break down waste. They, they, they make vitamins. They help protect your immune system, and they actually do a lot of the digestion of your fibers in your colon. Um, I do want to mention this. When people do Chapter 10 on my diet, a lot of times they... I tell them to do about seven cups of vegetables, but then they figure if I do that much, a l more is going to be better. So they do more and more and more and more and more until they come in and their gut is just completely distended because all that, they don't have enough microbes to digest all that fiber. So you might want to lower the fiber and see how much, even vegetable fiber, see what you can tolerate. Um, I have a sleep problem. Take two to three hours to fall asleep again. Happens twice each night. Stay in bed for as long as it takes. <clears throat> um, as far as sleeping goes, let's pull up the check sheet on that. Um, so if you don't have sleep apnea, then you have hot flashes. Do you have a bladder problem? Do you have high blood pressure, cramps? If you don't have those, then we know it's the adrenal. So you'd want to support the adrenal. There's a couple things that I do before bed, and I just want to show you this acu acupressure device. I built this from China that mimics my hand, and I do this on patients all the time. I, I put this right at the top of the back of my head right here, and that's at a, a location of um, the major um, the recovery uh, points in your body. 
So you can just tack this up. You can put this on your, your couch, and you can just sit back and let gravity just do all the work. And about a couple minutes, like two or three minutes, I'll be like ready to go to bed. So I do this every night before I go to bed. Um, it's a great torture, I mean treatment device. Um, but you can do it on your adrenals as well. Uh, why the adrenal body types can't do intense exercise uh, if you're recommending to activate fat burning? <clears throat> it has to do with this, and I think I'm going to try this one more time. I'm going to try to pop this open right here and, and show you. Maybe you might be able to see this, maybe not. But let me just show you something. When you exercise, you stress your body out, and then you stop. So you exercise, and then you stop, and then you're supposed to recover after that. Well, adrenal cases don't recover. So the more exercise they do without recovery, <clears throat> they actually slow down their ability to lose weight. So the benefits of exercise only occurs after the workout, when you're recovering, if you're recovering. Uh, the best exercise would be low intensity until you can actually recover. So if you're not if you're not sleeping, if you're tired, you should go very very light, especially if you have an adrenal problem. Um, is it possible to get back the lost buttocks, chest when you begin to heal? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've had people <coughs> with com complete atrophy on their body, and, and after menopause when their body is so far down and you start working with him, you get him sleeping, you get these the energy back the ins and the adrenals back, you get the health back, you get the food back in and then over time <clears throat> they actually get younger on the inside. I have a test that measures the biological age and then I had a, a gal, I haven't seen her for a couple years and she came in, she was, when I first saw her she was 211, she had a lot of health problems atrophy, shrinkage of muscles, no butt and she took off her coat. This was in the, in the winter time, and I my jaw dropped. I was like, what the, let me get my camera. Gorgeous body. She gained all this muscle mass, and she looked very, very, very great. Um, I mean, I just couldn't even believe that was her. So, um, yeah, it, it can happen, but you have, to, <clears throat> you have to not focus on the weight as a problem, of a, of a symptom. You have to work on the inner health and get your health back. It's hard because you're so focused on the weight, but the weight always comes off as a side effect. Um, yeah, <clears throat> Lori says, I can't eat all the vegetables required. I know. I know, because of the digestive system. So you, you might want to have additional vegetables. <clears throat> so let's say that you have a lot of bloating. Um, I'll just mention some of the vegetables that will be good for you. <clears throat> so you probably can't do um, cruciferous, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, but what you can do is zucchini, you can do tomato, spinach, you can do squash, you can do celery, carrot, uh, asparagus, pickles, fermented foods, sauerkraut. So yeah, you can do those vegetables and I think you'd be fine. Um, I know there's a lot of questions and I know I would love to answer all of them, but there's a lot here. Uh, is it possible to stop taking thyroid meds? Oh yeah, even after 20 years I've had people come off, um, I had a four-star general she came off after being 20 years on Synthroid it wasn't working so she got better and she came off with the help of her doc of course, I'm not telling you to come off. Um, does juicing give me enough fiber? <laughs> I'm, I'm not opposed to vegetable juice as long as you don't add carrot or anything sweet in there. But if you can't, if you want to get the nutrition from the vegetables, juice them. And because sometimes the fiber might irritate you. So that is a situation. Um, yes, so your weight is a symptom. Um, okay, what do I do when I have a thyroid problem? big all over and just found out tonight it's probably not my primary issue. <clears throat> well, here's what you do. If it's not autoimmune, okay, then it has to be a bile problem or estrogen. So if you want to find out if it's an estrogen problem, do you have any thyroid, I mean, high estrogen symptoms? Do you have heavy periods? Do you have a history of fibroids? Do you have endometriosis? 
Do you have heavy cramps? Do you bleed? Do you have irregular periods? Do you have infertility? Do you have, if you don't have those, maybe you have a lot of bloating with your gallbladder. So <clears throat> find out which ones that you have a problem with and go ahead and address that and see if you get better. And you probably will. Okay, you mentioned trauma. How do you heal from trauma? I'm going to give you a little tip on that. I should probably do a whole seminar, but um, there's, there's physical trauma and emotional trauma. I work on the physical, um, but I also work on the physical, uh, uh, the, the imprint that that emotional causes on the physical, which is the adrenal. So we actually do a lot of adrenal work. Uh, we help rejuvenate the adrenal. But if you have surgery, trauma, head injuries, infections, um, I'm going to give you a little principle of what I do to release it. Because if you had a gallbladder surgery and you gained all this weight, and if I were to do acupressure in your gallbladder and press into your gallbladder that you don't have, that would make things worse, okay? Because you're going to traumatize the person. Or if you had a problem with the uterus and you had that out, I'm not going to press in your uterus. Or if you had a problem with your thyroid, I'm not going to press in your thyroid. <clears throat> so how do you release stress in the body? Um, you would use the principle of opposites and, and you can even apply this to make it more real to yourself. If you want to try a really cool experiment uh, with a friend or family member, go ahead and find a friend or that has pain anywhere in the body. I don't care if it's in the foot, if it's in a bunion, if it's in the shoulder or the back. And let's say they have shoulder pain right here. If you were to do acupressure on the opposite side, you can get rid of this pain. You're not going to believe me unless you try it, but it will work. So anywhere where the person hurts, work on the opposite side. It's very, very simple, very powerful. <clears throat> Same thing goes with injuries. If you had your gallbladder out on the right side where it is, you would want to do acupressure on the left side. I'm not going to get into why that works, but it will release so much stress on your gallbladder, you just have to try it and believe me, because it works. So it'll release. It's kind of like closing down the application on your desktop. <clears throat> and by the way, if you had your gallbladder out, your other organs have to work twice as hard, especially the pancreas. So yeah, so that's one thing. Um, all right, so let's see. Monica's 5-HTP, something necessary. 5-HTP is not a bad thing to take before bed if you want to calm the adrenals and you want to help yourself sleep. So 5-HTP or L-tryptophan, those are precursors uh, that turn into serotonin, <clears throat> uh, the sleep hormone. So it's not a bad idea. I have no problem with that. I like it better than uh, um, melatonin, actually. Okay, <clears throat> Julie, uh, pregnancy 31, Parkinson's, fatigue, head injury severe. So you, you would want to find out what was it on the left, was on the top, and you want to do the opposite. And you know what's interesting? When you work on the opposite, it'll hurt twice as much on the opposite side. I know it's, don't ask me why. Okay, rare uh, genetic disease at 73, decreasing vision over 10 to 20 years now, and I have a huge craving for sweets. And now I'm 268 pounds. Um, okay, so we have that. We have, okay, fatty liver, gallstones, obstructive sleep apnea. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so let me just, there's a lot there to chew on, but I'm going to tell you something. If no colon, are probiotic, a probiotic still help, helpful? <clears throat> yes, but if you have a fatty liver, if you have gallstones, if you have obstructive sleep apnea, <clears throat> um, there is something that I think I'd probably recommend for you, Julie, that would, be create more of an effect on your body because we need to get you to sleep we need to help you shrink this the sinuses and we help to help really help help you with your gall bladder to help it convert your thyroid so that can work I think the most important thing to do <clears throat> would be to take the bile salts that I talked about gallbladder formula and take that for one week then add in some of the fat soluble vitamins because um, one of the things that it's very, 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 very uh, therapeutic to the mucous membranes of the sinus is the fish oils. But the one that I really like is the fish oil called DHA. You can get it at the health store. It's in 500 milligrams. 
500 milligrams DHA, DHA, and it's a type of fish oil that's amazing. You, I mean, they're doing they're regenerating brain cells. It's good for memory, cognitive brain injury, uh, but it's also good for the mucous membranes. It's good for the retina of the eye, good for sex hormones. It's good for the mucous membranes internally in your respiratory, and it's really good if you are trying to sleep and your head won't go to sleep. So if you are tired at night but your head doesn't go to sleep, <clears throat> take DHA and a little calcium. You can take calcium citrate, whatever, be right before bed. Boom. Watch what happens. You'll go right to sleep. Okay? Because that's less for like an overactive head. I have tendonitis in my wrist. Does magnetic bracelets work? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> they're going to affect the electrical conductivity, but try this experiment. Okay, pick. let's say it's in the right wrist. Press on the opposite one, wherever it is on the opposite side. Work that out, and it'll get rid of the pain. But you may want to try one more thing. Um, if, if you hurt on the wrist and the right, you want to work on the opposite forearm muscles. Okay? That will get rid of the wrist. If you have right knee pain, work on the opposite thigh muscle. Okay? It's a little tip. I'm just kind of teaching you guys how to do acupressure. All right, so let's see. General changes is eating plan. Acupressure balance is good under condition. Okay. Looks like my assistant and Dr. Monica, Dr. J, uh, she's on the chat, but she's not on the actual. We'll have to debug that. I'm sure that the link didn't quite work. This is like kind of my first time doing this, so it's kind of a good experiment. Working out the bugs. Next time will be better. I want to do a lot of live webinars. <clears throat> I have some questions that I want to ask you. Um, I know we ran out of time by a half hour, but um, I want to do more seminars, but I also want to um, find out what you want to talk about specifically, so I'm not all over the place. This kind of was just a kind of a test to see how this works. If you want to, me to do more seminars, I'll be happy to do it. You just have to tell me the different subjects, and I will um, send you a kind of a survey and ask you um, for some ideas and what you want me to talk about and I will gladly do that for you. So I'll send you that an email and you can kind of fill out something. Um, I don't know if the chat is going to be saved so don't bother typing in the chat. The next question um, that I was going to ask you is that um, I do want to survey one question in the chat room. Um, <clears throat> Right now, I currently do weekly videos, and um, some people were asking me, can you do more frequent videos? Um, I want to know if I did a short, like a one-minute video daily, would that be something interesting or it's too much? So if you could please answer my question, um, do you want weekly videos or would you want daily short little video, a tip? Um, because, I mean, for the time I take doing videos, I can easily do a, like a short little video because there's a lot to know. Um, so if you can tell me what frequent sees you want once a week or would you like daily little tiny webinars, uh, let me know in the chat box. I would really appreciate that. And then some people are asking me about the acupressure device. You can go to drbird.com and order them. They're, they're definitely um, come in handy as a do-it-yourself, and then I show you what to do with it. I have a lot of videos on that. Um, daily is too much, Bruce says. Yeah, so just tell me, like, once a week or um, daily? <laughs> a lot of people like weekly. <clears throat> Some daily. Okay, good. This is helpful. Okay, good. That's cool. Um, good, good, okay, weekly, okay, I'm, I th the majority is weekly, so it's going to be weekly, yeah, I agree, one minute is a little bit too short, um, okay, good, good, that's helpful, thank you very much. <laughs> So listen, I want to uh, thank you for um, helping me test this webinar and being on here and being interested. I really appreciate that. Um, 
and pr I thank you for all the wonderful feedback as well that you're giving me. I really, really appreciate that. And I'm going to send you a survey. Just type in any ideas that you have that I want to. I should do some videos on. I will gladly do them, and we'll post them, and we'll do some more live webinars. So I want to thank you all for being on. Uh, but I'm going to end off right now, and uh, I want to wish you a good night. And uh, I will see you on the next webinar, and uh, we'll talk to you later. All right. Well. Awesome. Thanks. We'll see you later. Actually, I'm just going to do the question right now. What ideas do you have for the uh, for Good. Boom. All right. Oh. <laughs> Wait a second. Poll question. Oh, it's options. No, that's not going to be it. I'll send you something. I don't want to do a poll. I want to do a chat. So I'll send that to you when I figure this thing out. Awesome. All right. Have a great night.